we don't know what's happening, but still bees disappeared. If the bees stop pollinating, we wouldn't be able to produce the amount of food to keep the current population fed. Two thirds of the world food production depends on honeybees, and therefore humans depend on bees. Basically, my favorite saying is if the bees go, we go, literally. The more we can spread the awareness, the better. It's all about saving the bees right now. This one was a swarm that I just poured in there, and so they're, they're building comb naturally. Hi, my name's Paul Hakimian, and I'm a director at Honey Love. So this is what we do at Honey Love. We're urban beekeepers that rescue honeybees, and we find them new homes. So we're basically foster parents. The, the current agricultural system is a big problem for honeybees. Bees as humans need uh, 10 essential amino acids. So they need diversity of pollen, which they cannot find often in areas that are heavily managed by uh, agricultural practices. The agricultural bees are the pollinators. They move them in big trucks from orchards to different farms around the country. And those are the ones that are increasingly dying on a rapid scale. We're protecting the bees that land in someone's home, they land in a tree. And those bees are actually thriving in the urban environment because there's less pesticides. They're, they're not being trucked around in trucks. In the urban environment with the feral bees that we deal with, meaning wild bees, uh, are thriving. My philosophy with ecology is, you know, definitely a sustainable approach. You know, the great thing is, like, using local ingredients, everything tastes better. Everything tastes fresher. What Paul at Honey Love is doing is incredible. Not only in his backyard, but he's setting it up in other people's yards. See how they can build a comb right on the frame like that? When you taste this, this honey that this, this guy I know has some boxes full of bees and frames and he hands me a frame and says here, as opposed to you know buying honey in a bottle that looks like a bear, it tastes completely different. These uh, pesticides uh, pollute the environment and they have an effect on honeybees. For example, the bees is disoriented. The bees loses the ability to, to move and eventually to fly and to orientate in the field. It's very important to support the research towards agricultural practices that use less pesticides and still allow the farmers to have a good production. It's been shown that's possible, but still the research on, in these fields is lacking. Uh, most of the research focuses on finding better pesticides, but this is not the way. Seeing how honey is actually made is incredible to me. It's, it's just nature, you know, and it's opened up my eyes to a lot of the other processes. Yes, how are you? Fine, how are you doing? What kind of melon is this? Whether it be, you know, the way things grow and biodynamic farming, I, I have a completely different outlook on things now. A big mission I have right now is to try to educate the next generation because if kids growing up now can learn and understand these things, you know, I feel like they're the answer to the problem because we're all already kind of screwed. <laughs> so when you hear the word swarm, you think, oh my gosh, you know, these bees are coming to like sting. They're not, they're actually looking for a new home. You could stand still and a swarm could go right past you and nothing would happen. So you don't want to call vector control or pest control. You actually want to call beekeeper and there's a lot of beekeepers, you'd be surprised in your area. When you have more and more organizations and more and more people donating their own time to help make these issues better or to go away, we're, we're definitely on the right road, the, kind of like the road to recovery. If you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.